Edinburgh, Scotland's capital, one of Europe's most iconic cities and home to Heart of Midlovian, the largest fan-owned football club in the United Kingdom. However, the journey to this feat hasn't been smooth. From staring extinction in the face, it was the fans that stepped up and saved their football club. At Fan Up, we wanted to hear the stories of supporters about what it took to save their football club, what others could learn from them, and just what makes hearts so special. As soon as you go to a game, you get hooked, and then that was me for an early age. The whole kind of atmosphere kind of drew me to the place because it was like somewhere you kind of really felt like you belonged. I think it's a huge part of everyone's life. It's where you see your friends and your family. My father was a big Hearts fan. He uh, took me to my first game when I was four. I remember going in and just the, the, the floodlights and the, the smells at that point around the, the football club. The stadium's incredible. When things have grown great, uh, sometimes you think the roof's going to come off this place. Since the turn of the century, Hearts fans have endured a topsy-turvy ride in 2005 after a previous owner threatened selling their ground and a move to Murrayfield, Vladimir Romanov arrived, ensuring a future at Tyne Castle along with the promise of Champions League football. Whilst there was an initial boost, cracks soon started to appear. By 2013, the club had been plunged into administration and was facing relegation to the Scottish Championship a far cry from Romanov's European promise. It was very difficult, um, you know, I added a few wrinkles to the face, that's for sure. I mean, on the park, obviously, Hart struggled because, you know, money was very tight. We, we had to throw a bunch of youngsters on the pitch. You know, we were in a horrible position, you know. I had been involved with Hearts. I came back, obviously, under uh, Vladimir Romanov, and, you know, we, we kind of knew the wages Hearts were paying and, and the money that was coming in and you know I've never been brilliant at maths but even I knew we couldn't sustain what we were paying in salaries compared to what we were bringing in. I know for a fact that my dad was like really scared that hearts were going to cease to exist again family affair for him my granddad took him to the games and he was younger no longer with us but now my, my dad took me and like he'd have certainly been worried that he wouldn't have been able to do that with his son anymore. When you go from worrying about who are we going to sign? Are we going to lose that player? Are we going to? How are we going to defend against Celtic this week? To thinking, how are we going to get the money together? So I think suddenly, we all became financial experts, or at least we thought we were. You know, if if Vladimir didn't pay the wages, and it was only a matter of time before the club was going to implode, and that's what happened, and uh, it was horrific. With the club plunged into financial crisis, a number of supporters had been working in the background in the hope of saving Hearts for future generations. The foundation of Hearts, a group of Hearts supporters, clubbed together with the aim of fan ownership and to save the club from administration. Well, we had an owner and retrospectively now you realise that it, he, he, he had no passion for this football club. The, the regime that was running our football club was taking us in a, in a direction which was clearly not community-based, it really wasn't. But we realised it um, early and, and we knew that something had to be done well in advance of where we got to in 2013. Um, I had an idea and, and Jamie and Brian had an idea which was uh, roughly about the same, it was to raise money from the fans. So mine was for a 17,000 fans to give £5 a week for a set period of time and that was to stop us moving from here to, to, to Murrayfield. Jamie and Brian's idea was a wee bit further on and that was to actually buy the club from Vladimir Romanov. The pivotal figure was Gary Mackay. He knew myself and he knew Brian and, and, and Jamie and when both of us had kind of pitched the same idea to Gary, put us together and we met, we just clicked. And then a mutual friend introduced us to Alec Mackey and uh, from there we formed the Foundation of Hearts. It was just as well we did set up because when the inevitable happened here, the fans had somewhere to turn. You know, we, we wanted to try and speak to as many people, as many journalists, politicians, Hearts fans, um, anybody that had influence to, to talk to us to see if they had a, you know, an interest in this idea of fans' ownership. And those conversations proved valuable. The Foundation of Hearts were introduced to Anne Budge, a businesswoman who believed in what the Foundation stood for and offered them valuable financial support. 
Budge was able to purchase the club in 2014 from Romanov and outlined a five-year plan which would see the club move into fan ownership under the guise of the foundation with the assistance of fan pledges. I'm prepared to say that I definitely shared a tear at um, when, when we come out of administration. Anne Budge is pivotal as well. I mean, she, her heart's in the right place. She didn't say much, but I just knew that her heart was in here. So it's, that was good enough for me. It, it wouldn't have happened if, if Anne hadn't I came in. And I think Anne got us. She understood us. She understood that we, were, we weren't in it for anything uh, for ourselves. You know, full-time whistle goes at Hamden, you've won a cup. It's kind of similar to that when we got the news in that that was the deal done. Obviously, we'd been relegated and that wasn't fantastic, but the thing was that I still had Heart of Melodian Football Club to support. I still had my team. I could still come to Tyncastle with my dad and watch a game of football, and that just meant absolutely everything. So, yeah, I think right up until that moment, it was like waiting for the full-time whistle. You know, 1998, after Ali McCoy had pulled the goal back, and. We thought they maybe got a penalty and then thankfully the full-time whistle went. I think exiting administration was right up there for Hearts fans. Under budget stewardship, Hearts secured promotion back to the Scottish Premiership and built a brand new main stand. Whilst the construction of the new main stand and a global pandemic delayed the plan by two years, in 2021, Budge's shares were officially transferred to the Foundation of Hearts, making Heart of Midlovian the UK's largest fan-owned club. And it was a really special feeling knowing that Hearts were going to become the UK's biggest fan-owned club. A real testament to the, the, kind of the power of the supporters as a collective and just the hard work that everyone's done from the board, the staff, Foundation of Hearts, the fans. Everybody's pulled together and what looked like an impossible dream has made a reality. We always believed it would. Um, it took a little longer again because of the stand uh, money was, was put in. But uh, so it took probably what, seven, seven to eight years instead of five uh, with the plan. But no, just really, really proud that it came, came about. The foundation of hearts had been knocked by other clubs. You know, it'll never work, you'll never be able to do this, you'll never be able to do that. And uh, you know, we're proving everybody wrong, which is fantastic. Some people on the, from the outside maybe think, oh, it's not what we imagine with fan ownership, you've not got much control. But I don't think the idea really was that fans would have a say in transfers or managerial appointments, you know, I think it was about having that um, that foundation that the same thing that happened under previous ownership couldn't happen again, that fans would have decisions over the big things like will the club be sold to a, to a different owner or a majority shareholder. But there, there's been times where Hearts have been dangerously close to leaving Tyne Castle and playing elsewhere, so knowing that that's not going to happen anymore because what hearts them would vote to leave Tyne Castle. It's just a great feeling knowing that the club's location, if you will, in the future is in safe hands. With modern football rife with ownership models so far removed from the fan base, hearts are evidence that with supporters at the forefront, football clubs can be a success. Last season, Hearts finished third in the Scottish Premiership, ahead of everyone but the old firm clubs, and will be hosting European football at Tyne Castle this season, ultimately showcasing to the football world that fan ownership is a model that can be a success. Well, every fan in Scotland should look at their own club, and then look at this club and do what we did. It is great to know that I follow a club that's an example to the rest of the United Kingdom in terms of how to grow a fan ownership model, how to, you know, like we've set the bar and it's up to other clubs to kind of, oh, so I'd rather we kind of stayed the biggest fan on club, but it'd be great to see more clubs kind of take that ownership model because with the way modern football is going, you've got like third party ownerships and massive like conglomerates like the City Group, stuff like that. So it does kind of feel like obviously football's the way it is now, cash talks, but it's great to know that some, some clubs somewhere are still operating with the interests of their fans at heart and when the fans own the club you can't really ask for much more than that. Looking ahead, the journey is not finished. Being a member of the Foundation of Hearts is a lifelong pledge to Heart of Midlovian. The supporters are the foundation of this great club, as they are in every club across the world. But as generations pass, Hearts fans will be safe in the knowledge that their club is truly theirs for life. You know, any player now that comes to Hearts and pulls on that jersey, it's important that they know how important this club is to, to your, your working class supporters because um, they've done everything they possibly could to save the place and now you know we want it to be successful. 
I think we're just looking for maybe just a little bit more silverware. We're not, we're not too impatient. We did have 36 years without it not too long ago, so it's only been 12 at this stage. Uh, this, this club's going to go on from strength to strength, and, um, and quite rightly so. The, the, the fans deserve it. They've, they've backed it and continue to back it, so uh, I'm very excited about the future. Uh, I, I think um, we've got things right off the field, so inevitably things should, should actually start coming together on the field.